So I missed the opposition of Jupiter. It was closest in 70 years and I missed it. But no need to worry because tonight seems like it's gonna be clear and this will be like the first time I've done astrophotography in a few months. And in the meantime, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to take your Jupiter images to the next level. Well, cover's off. Let's go review the damages. We got some bugs up here that can easily be cleaned off. Some dead bugs, like a few dead bugs here. Otherwise, I think this thing has been under here in some severe weather for a long time. And obviously the covers did their job, so I'm happy with that. Now I can feel a lot more comfortable leaving this out here for long periods of time. But in the winter time, I'm definitely bringing this in. So as I'm cleaning this, this telescope up, I'm going to give you uh, some of the things I would recommend to take your planetary images to the next level. And the first one is make sure you go out in good weather. So what I mean by good weather is make sure it's not like... Of course there can't be any clouds, right? Everyone knows that. But I mean by make sure it's like the good, the seeing is good, so the atmosphere is calm. If it's a clear night and you find it very windy or a storm just cleared up, don't even bother doing planetary astrophotography. You can do other astrophotography, but don't bother like doing planetary astrophotography because the atmosphere in that circumstance is going to be way too wobbly. You're never going to get a clear picture of anything. You're going to have some disgusting looking uh, wobbly picture of the planet. So you want to make sure you have good weather. Second thing is you want to make these two things go hand in hand, columnation and focus. You can't reach good focus without good columnation. So what you want to do before you go out to see the image of planets is even you can test this out on a star, go all the way out of focus and if the star looks, the star is going to be all like out of focus because it'll be look like a round. If the center of the telescope there's like going to be look like a little black hole in the middle of that star. That's centered and you're columnated. Once you're columnated, then you're good to go with the planets. So all you need to do then is make sure you have that focus spot on. Focus is very important with planets. And for focus, I recommend a lot of people say, oh, go to a star, go to the moon. Why not just focus on what you're imaging? Don't focus on the moons of the planet. Focus on the actual planet. So if it's Saturn, focus on those rings. If your telescope's big enough, you might be able to resolve the Cassini division. Jupiter, focus on those belts. Don't go for the moons of Jupiter. That's That doesn't make any sense. You want to focus on the, the thing that you're actually going to be imaging. What tool are we going to use to cut the grass? I think I'm going to use these right here. My tool bench, bro. All the tools. These, these should do it. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Cut that lens, you know. Yeah, those should do it. So while I'm cutting this grass, I'm going to tell you guys some more things on how to make your photo, planetary photos next level. And this other thing I'm going to tell you is something that I would recommend to do to get the best possible planetary image. And that is, look at all that grass, and that is to wait for opposition. So this one, you know, image planets throughout the year, but you really want to take advantage of the time when the planet's at opposition when it's close to Earth. Unfortunately, I just missed opposition closest Jupiter in 70 years, but it's only like two weeks after, so Jupiter's still gonna be pretty close. So get these times nearest to opposition so to take advantage of that planet being closest to Earth. And another one that um, I really I learned a little while back is that make sure you invest in a planetary camera. So if you ha are using like a DSLR or um, a cheap planetary camera, make sure to get a uh, really, um, like a high, higher quality planetary camera because even if your telescope is cheap or it doesn't have a lot of focal length, getting a nice um, high frame rate planetary camera with that telescope will really um, improve the quality of your planetary images. So the one I'm using today is the ZWO um, ASI 224MC color camera and that camera is really great for planetary astrophotography. So just get a dedicated planetary astrophotography camera. I started out with a DSLR and as you can imagine uh, the results weren't too pleasing but if I bet if I would have used a planetary camera on that same Dobsonian telescope it, um, I would probably gotten some pretty impressive images of the planet with the Dobsonian scope. So planetary camera is number one uh, one of the be best things you can invest in for a good planetary astrophotography and also a tracking mount so if you don't already a tracking mount can really help um, actually improve the clarity of your planetary shot.
so guys, as you can see, we are out here with Jupiter right now. And these are not the ideal viewing conditions you would like for Jupiter. As you can see, this is as good as focus I could could get right now. And Jupiter still looks quite blurry. And as you can see, it keeps going in and out of focus. Kind of looks like sometimes the focus gets good, sometimes it goes out. That's the atmosphere. That's all the atmosphere. There's really nothing you can do about that except by an atmosphere disturption corrector. Those cost a lot of money. Those can help a lot with this kind of blurry atmosphere. But there could be worse. I'm telling you that. There could be worse. You can see, look at that. There's a little moon right there next to you. I'm going to see if that's going to... Maybe that'll cast a shadow later tonight. But this could be worse, so I'm happy with this right now. And as you can see, great red spots are in here. And I'll give you a little um, what I'm using here. So I'm using... If you're using SharpCat, I would recommend shooting at RGB24. That'll give you color images right out of the um, the video, so you don't need to switch it up in other softwares. Make sure you're using a like a area of interest, because this will allow you to get a higher frame rate. I would just leave the gain on auto and the exposure, expose it so it's not overexposed and not underexposed. But those settings should result in a pretty um, good image of the, any planet, really, as long as um, you know the weather's good and you have good scene. This could also be. I have to admit, this could also be because my telescope needs culminating. I'm gonna go look into that later, and also I need to go look into my my mirror needs to be cleaned. That could help with some uh, clarity as well. I hope you are getting out to view the planets, and I hope this video inspired you to. Whatever telescope you have, give it a shot with planetary astrophotography using the, some of the tips I gave you in this video, and hopefully you enjoy the image of Jupiter. I'll share it with you at the end of the video. Um, until next time, clear skies. You know you made it.